welcome back. This is our first episode of fan casting. We're talking about Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. We're casting it for being live action. Now, you may well know the fantastic animated film uh, mm-hmm. produced by Lord and Miller uh, that came out at the end of 2018. A great movie, and we're going to get into some casting. Yes. So we're going to start with Miles Morales. Now, who did you pick as your Miles Morales? Because I know this is a tough choice. Yes. Um, well, I remember that for... What, 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 who they actually casted, um, Shamit Moore, I believe, he was a relative, like, he was still, like, an emerging actor, and I thought, you know, um, cater to that, like, idea, like, bringing, like, not a recognizable talent. Um, after, like, like um, checking over, like, all the TV shows I watch, all the movies, um, I personally settled on Caleb McLaughlin. Hopefully I pronounced his last name correctly. Um, he's well, pretty much well known for uh, Netflix's Stranger Things. He plays his, he plays Lucas. Um, one, he fits the age. Um, Miles in the movie, I believe, is like 13, 14. He's only starting, like, might be a little older. I know he's just starting, like, uh, like middle, like, like middle school, high school in that area. Yeah. Um, so he fit, Caleb fits the age. And also for Miles in my head, when I picture, like, the typical, like, like miles like in like personality in a nutshell i see like someone who's like a laid back like chill um just all around like charming guy but not like in a suave james bond way just like charming in his like own like dorky um like uh sense and i think caleb mclaughlin would work would do that really well he's also he kind of already exhibits some of those personality traits in stranger things and i think um overall like i think he'd be a very like uh witty and very um down to earth miles and i think that's that down to earth part is probably the most important aspect of the character for me who'd you pick so i went with the unknown um i want to see someone in this role who i've never seen as an actor before or seen in any major film um i thought about caleb i didn't think he quite fit the role Okay. Um, there's something about him. I like his. I like him as an actor. I don't think he quite fits the role of Miles. Okay, that's um, fair. I don't believe he's a Spanish speaker. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd really prefer for this role someone who's Afro Latino. Right. Uh, sure. So I think making that as a casting choice was really important to me because I think that's really important to who Miles Morales is as a character. Mm-hmm. Um, and finding a young actor in general is really difficult and uh young actors who are african and latino um is just very hard to find in movies that i've seen um so i thought choosing an unknown would be the best decision i think bringing someone who is a fresh face you don't know him as like oh that's the kid from stranger things i think you want whoever is the actor playing miles morales to be the person that after he plays that role was, oh, that's Miles Morales. I think that's what you're looking for. And for those mm-hmm. reasons, I think an unknown actor is the best choice for Miles Morales. That's fair. I mean, hey, Mark Hamill was a unknown until George Lucas found him for Star Wars. So, I mean, you know, you never know how that works out. And exactly. I, I, I did, I did, not that I forgot, but like, I, I'm just recalling the scene where he's like talking when he's like talking to both his mom and dad and he's like switching in and out of like um, their, their native languages. And um, that is true. That is an important aspect, especially since, you know, we do need more like hero, superheroes of color on right. screen. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. And I think especially for um, Latinos, we don't, we aren't represented a lot of time on screen mm-hmm. unless, you know, you're Zoe Saldana, um, who's in all green makeup? She's an alien. Um, or your Michael, well. Pe- yeah, or Michael Pena as Luis in Ant Man. Um, we aren't really in a lot of movies as Latinos, um, and I think having that representation on screen would be really awesome. And so, yeah, that's kind of the choice I came up with. Sure, I roll with that. That's awesome. Now, now moving on to the next pick. Um, we're gonna go with Spider-Man. And we're talking about the main Spider-Man from the animated movie. We're not talking about the one who 
spoilers, um, dies early on in the film. Right. Uh, so who did you pick for that role? Well, this is not, um, well, one of the things I loved about this particular Peter Parker was that he was not the typical Peter Parker. This guy was like kind of a bum, like he was like burnt out. He's not the heroic, you know, like in his prime. And he's also like very like sarcastic. His wit is like um, very sharp. And um, this one that I actually struggled with for a bit because I was like, who? Because Jake Johnson did such a great job right. as Peter Parker. I was like, I can't literally like picture anyone else. But this may be an unorthodox one since going against what we said for Miles, he's kind of like one of the most well-known actors around. I decided to cast Ryan Gosling. Interesting. Because, yes, because I thought like, you know, Ryan Gosling is often like remembered for like serious roles like in Drive or um, First Man. But like his funny side, like in uh, La La Land or The Big Short, I think is I think as a comic actor, he's hilarious and he's like so underrated. Like his, <laughs> just this like sarcastic, like, um delivery style i think it's just so awesome so maybe that's just me wanting to see him like utilize that more in roles but also i think he's he fits the idea of a like spider-man who's kind of like at first like doesn't care as much he's kind of just like oh like whatever and he thinks miles is more of a nuisance than like an ally right i think later on as you know his character matures and he goes on his arc i think you know ryan gosling is more than capable of displaying that like emotional uh what's the word i guess insecurity and like mm-hmm. or at least growth um the one thing maybe would be that gosling maybe not the right age he's i mean, think he might be a bit younger than how the film portrayed their peter but i mean you know we've said in past episodes makeup and hairstyling has come so far so i mean i think i think it could work um in terms of in terms of just the look and i think as an actor i think he'd be a very dynamic pick especially if we pit him against you know either Caleb McLaughlin or any new character especially since it's Ryan Gosling in right. general. so yeah that's so, why I, I, so I thought about Ryan Gosling and I I was between him Sam Rockwell and the person I eventually chose um now what I really liked about Ryan Gosling is what you said about his comedic side um like in Crazy Stupid Love Yes, that's another um, one. And is it the nice guys, the other guys, the one with um, Russell Crowe? I think it's uh, I think it's the nice guys. Yeah, yeah with Russell Crowe. Yeah, he's hilarious in that yeah. too. Um, and I think he can bring depth to it, but I don't think he can kind of be as miserable hmm. as Spider Man is as the start, okay. as the actor who I chose, which is Oscar Isaac. Interesting. Okay. Now. Anyone who's seen Oscar Isaac knows he's an amazing actor. Um, Like whether it's being creepy and serious and like ex machina uh, or it's him in star Wars where he's, Mm. you know, whatever you think of his, of the character itself, he plays that role, especially, especially in the last Jedi of being like this dude who's kind of just frustrated about everything. You know what I mean? And really unsatisfied. Uh, and you'll find him in other roles, um, Triple Frontier, mm-hmm. no matter what you think about the movie. Um, he kind of brings out that sort of, I'm having a tough time. My life isn't where I want it to be. Like a, an exasperated like personality. Right. Mm-hmm. But then in that movie, um, you know, this heist kind of brings him out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought comparing that to this movie, where Miles Morales kind of brings him out of that kind of rut in his life. And I think Oscar Isaac, um, he better fits the age range, I think. Yeah, that's than true. Ryan Gosling does. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think they're actually too far apart age-wise. But Oscar Isaac kind of looks the age that you'd want. And I think okay. just kind of looking at Oscar Isaac, you can see him being playing a character who's kind of miserable and not... Yeah happy to be doing anything i can see that more than i can see in uh ryan gosling look to his performance in the rise of skywalker press junkets for reference (laughs) will that get us marked by disney (laughs) i don't know (laughs) i hope not um interesting choice yeah yeah um on to gwen stacy 
Um, so who, who did you end up picking? Um, this one was both like easy and kind of tricky just cause I was like, okay, who's like, like young actress who I can, um, like who would be great in the role. Like I really like Haley Steinfeld did so well. And especially like, I don't know if you've seen, uh, the Coen brothers true grit. Yeah. 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 She was like 13 in that movie, but she like did it so well. So if it's like, if I could take true grit, Haley Steinfeld, or just Haley Steinfeld in general, if she wasn't already um voicing the character i think um she um that would have been like a pitch perfect casting for me i was kind of stretched between an unknown and um who i ended up picking just because unknown for the same reasons as you are i just wanted to see someone like just like burst onto the scene and like make this already very dynamic role their own i settled on sophia lills from known for the it movies okay and um that what's the Netflix show? I'm not okay with this. Yeah. I thought, cause when I picture Gwen, it's, um, you know, part of her backstory, she's like rock band, like, like this like punk rock star, wrong, punk rock star. And um, I think while her role in it is like different from Gwen Stacy, like very different. I think like things in like, I'm not okay with this. And if you look at her other roles, I believe she was in the Hansel and Gretel remake, I believe she has this more feisty side which i think can translate to a very um like intense Gwen Stacy, or not intense in like a dark gritty way but just intense as in like um she's very confident she she like knows like what's going on she has like full read of the situation um and um going along with my caleb mclaughlin casting i believe they are in the um closer um age range so that's who I pick. Um, uh, that's who I ultimately settled on. So be a little. Yeah, that's a good pick that I never really thought about. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, looking at, I never, it just never came to mind, which is kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a very good pick. Mm-hmm. Now, there are a few people I was between, um, mm-hmm. two of which was Amanda Stenberg um, and Catherine Newton. Ooh, those would have been good, yeah um 100 have you seen blockers not yet i i um i heard it was i heard it was an enjoyable time though it's it's a movie you'd expect to be terrible by the trailers mm-hmm. it's one of the few that has bad trailers but then the movie is actually like hilarious so one of john cena right yeah exactly awesome. and uh, <laughs> leslie mann um, and Catherine newton kind of steals the show as a mm-hmm. sweet awkward kind of popular kid who kind of walks the line between all three of those right so i thought about her but at the end it was clear to me that the right casting choice was storm reed storm reed okay now now i know you may think oh a wrinkle in time that movie was not good (laughs) right but you haven't seen her in the invisible man amazing euphoria She's amazing. Oh, she's in a Euphoria. She, yeah, she plays uh, oh. Zendaya uh, Rue, Zendaya's little sister. What a power duo! Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> yeah, and she she plays that role as a little sister, great, and she's mm-hmm. really good at being kind of quiet, um, yet very vulnerable, and she does really well in small, more intimate scenes. That's and awesome. I think that's what's really important with the character of Gwen Stacy. Um, because I think a lot of her character character development is in the quiet scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's when you see an actress who's this young, who can have that variety and can get to that depth, depth as an actor to get those serious roles, I have a lot of faith in them right. to be able to commit to the other roles um, that yeah. may be a little bit more comedic and have a little bit more um of kind of a movement between genres Hmm. as far as humor and drama so i think she could do that really well um Hmm. to be honest i just want to see more of her in general like i can't wait to see what what she does yeah i think she's going to be in a the suicide squad sequel next year so she is yeah i'm really excited just to see in general what she does that's a that's a kind of like you i didn't think of that but that's an that's honestly a great choice yeah it was where my find my mind first went um Mm -hmm she's one of those people that you kind of watch her in a film or two Mm -hmm. and you're like, Oh, she's going to be a star. Yeah. 
uh, you, you, you can tell the second she's on screen, she has that presence mm -hmm. and there's just no way. And I think also, um, so I look through these people's Instagrams <laughs> Okay. And I was like trying to figure out like, what do they do? What's their personality like, right? Trying to get that little extra edge mm -hmm. of who they are to kind of match them to the character. And she's constantly posting these videos of her like working out and stuff, mm -hmm. like being in good shape. And I'm like, oh, that's perfect because you're playing uh, Gwen Stacy, mm -hmm. who's a really athletic character. And a lot of the work that goes into making that character good is physicality. being able yeah, to have the physicality and do i think being able to do stunt work is important yeah um, because it, it makes it feel more authentic when you can see someone's face and it doesn't have to be you know they have to cut around it and i think she might have that athletic background mm -hmm. uh, to be able to help that performance so that was awesome. another part that i think really helped with the choice of her as well not bad not bad so now um, to the one that I had a really tough time with, not my hardest time in this casting, mm -hmm. Prowler. Um, who did you go with? Because this was a really tough one. Yeah, it was uh, honestly like this was tough. Once I sat down, I was like, okay, who can we replace like Mahershala Ali with? And I was like, we're replacing Mahershala Ali. Hopefully, I said the name right. I'm like, again, great casting. He did a great job. And I'm like, shoot, like who could play Prowler, especially since like he's not the character with the most he's a character with like not as much screen time but he also has like just as big a presence as anyone yeah. just mentioned so um one of my like always one of my images in my head for prowler is the uh, what's the word like dichotomy between how he's like the chill like cool uncle and then when he suits up he's like this terrifying like force of nature partially right. it's because of his insane theme music that 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 theme is crazy and lends so much to like his presence um and so i thought what you what would what one would need for prowler would be that ability to balance the char the charisma and also just be super intense and driven and almost like a bring a sort of terminator type vibe like when just like pushing through everything he's going to try and do everything to get to you this is probably the most unorthodox one I've done since he's not particularly known for film. And he's, he's actually just mainly known as a stage actor. I chose David Diggs from Hamilton. Um, Broadway people will know him. One of Tony, he played in Hamilton. He had two roles as a, a soldier, um, French soldier Lafayette and as politician Thomas Jefferson. Um, and he's also right now in the TNT Snowpiercer show. Yeah. And so I think just between those two roles alone, I think that like emphasized like what I was looking for in a Prowler, just because in his role as Hamilton, he is like a ball of energy. This guy is like so, um, just, he's just so cool. He's so uh, like enthusiastic. He just has like, he's like just really great at displaying like very, like his going through the whole emotional range. And then um, on his role in Snowpiercer, he's just very like haunted, like very, forceful uh, presence and I thought combining the two would make it a very um, uh, um, would just lend so much to what the character is of Prowler. I almost went with Donald Glover mm. but also one Donald Glover is like one of the most frequent fan casts for Prowler as, that I've seen and also he also already technically played Prowler in Spider-Man Homecoming. I don't know if you remember the scene yeah, I do. Yeah, that like he was technically he's already played Prowler, so I had to stray away with him, even though he too would be a perfect pit pit pick. Can't talk today. <laughs> so I was like, okay, who along like why did Don Glover work? What did I look for? And then David Diggs seems like such a interesting, unorthodox choice. And um, I don't know. I think the guy would be a, bring a lot of energy to the role and force to the role of Prowler. So that's my pick, and I. Um, yeah, that's my yeah. Point. What made this difficult, this pick in particular, is where does this movie fit in, right? Um, is it an MCU movie? I kind of lean towards, right, we left this open for interpretation, but I kind of lean towards, I'm going to leave that door open, so it could be, but I'm also not going to play right into it. 
Um, I almost picked Donald Glover Mm -hmm. just because he so perfectly can fit that role. Um, But I said, I'm viewing this like if this was an alternate universe from the MCU that could be connected to it Mm -hmm. um, if they opened it up in that direction. So my runner up was Jamie Foxx. Ooh, Jamie Foxx. Django himself. Yeah. Um, If you see him, you know the personality he has. He has one of the most fun personalities out there. But when it comes to playing a villain... Oh, yeah. Like in um, Baby Driver, Mm -hmm. he can play a villain. Yes. Um, He has that emotional range. Have you you seen um, Django Unchained? I have. I have. Okay, yeah. That, like, especially since even in that role, too, he has that, like, cool, dangerous side. Yeah. Um, Jamie, did I even think of Jamie Foxx? I can't remember. That is that is a really good one. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what made me not pick him is I feel like I really, I think he may actually be the better casting. Mm-hmm. But I really wanted to put this guy in the role. He's like, okay. I really think he needs a bigger role in just movies in general because every movie he's in he is either the best part of the movie mm. um but he's as a supporting character oh. so lakeith stanfield is who i picked okay interesting interesting i get i i was trying to think like oh who's like who fits that mo of like best part but small supporting role and once you said lakeith i was like oh yeah that definitely makes sense <laughs> i mean he's just like awesome and everything he's in i don't know how to have you seen sorry to bother you not yet i'll admit i but i have seen him in knives out uncut gems get out um i have not seen sorry to bother you yet though that is on the list but he's great he's so great in uncut gems Mm -hmm. yes i mean in that supporting role and he can play that kind of more intimidating side to him but he can also play a really emotional side i don't know if you've seen short term 12 not yet either um he's in that too uh and he has this really he's a supporting very much a supporting character and he's one of the foster kids who's Mm -hmm. leaving um at the end of the year and he has this really emotional arc that he just perfectly portrays and you just feel for him so much Mm -hmm. um that i just don't see i see both sides of what he can do as prowler and also as Miles's uncle. And I, I kind of see Lakeith Stanfield in general as just being kind of like a cool guy. Yeah. Um, if you ever see him doing an interview, uh, he's really just seems like the nicest guy to be around. Mm-hmm. And he's also in Atlanta. I almost forgot that he's in Atlanta, which is awesome. Um, and he's hilarious in that show. He's kind of just like a great character. I think he could really nail this role. Uh, I definitely need to see more of him as well. He's definitely like one of those like emerging talents in Hollywood right now. Yeah. Yeah. He, he needs to be a star. That's my thing. He Mm -hmm. needs to be a star. And I think having a supporting role in this big of a movie could be a breakout role for him. Yeah. If they did something like this, this definitely has a lot of potential for him to like, just go wild and interesting choice to Keith Stanfield. Yeah. Keith Stanfield over Jamie Foxx. That's that's a tough choice, man. I gotta say. It was a 51%, 49% type <laughs> of thing. Um, oh, man. If you want to uh, market the movie more, you probably would pick Jamie Foxx. Mm-hmm. But I feel like Lakeith Stanfield is the right choice. Yeah, I feel like he could do, like, he'll just surprise us all, especially since, like, he's still, like, again, like, he's only been supporting roles. So I think this would be a great, that would be a great chance for him to, like, just, um go off and yeah interesting okay cool cool um so the next one is miles morales's dad on jefferson now who did yeah jefferson morales or yeah jefferson davis jefferson davis yeah um who did you end up picking for this because i had a tough time with this one this was one of this was actually one of the easier ones for me if i'll admit it um if i admit it um because when I was going over again, like the traits of Jefferson, the image, like the person, like and the person and the actor just popped into my head immediately, and I was like, you know what? It's probably not going to get any better than this, um, so I have to do this. So I chose actor named Cress Williams. He's currently on the DC show Black Lightning. 
Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And he's one, he's fantastic in that role as Black Lightning. That's a great show. Um, you, sh- I recommend it. Viewers should um, check it out. It's all on Netflix. Um, and also his main character, the title character of Black Lightning, shares so many traits with Jefferson and that they're both like upstanding members of the community. Jefferson is a cop. Um, Black Lightning, uh, Black Lightning is a school teacher. And then they also, they're just pa- their parents dealing with all of the crazy like stuff happening in their city. And um, I just the way that Chris William, like at least in Black Light, especially in Black Lightning, the way he like just delivers lines and he discusses things and even his more emotional moments, he like has this like wisdom and like broken in personality. Like he's been around, but he hasn't let it, let it like, you know, like break his like morality or sense of the world he's still like a relatively like good optimistic guy and i think um and again he's a father in the show in black lightning so i think that would translate obviously so well to a father role especially this type of father role in jefferson since like jefferson and miles are like estranged in a way throughout most of the movie yeah so i think um i think russ williams would be a great pick just because again he's he's been he's been through the superhero gig and he's great at portraying a father he's great at portraying a mentor he's great at portraying like just a guy trying to do the right thing so i think he'd be a i think he'd be a great choice to play uh jefferson that's it that's a solid choice now it's not who i would have went with yeah um sure. now you know who i was talking about last time jamie fox mm-hmm I almost went with him here too. Oh man. <laughs> um, because I think he could really play either the Prowler or the uh, Jefferson Davis role. Mm. He has kind of, because when the two words that when I thought of Jefferson Davis was tough love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I was trying to think of an actor who could kind of hit that. Mm-hmm. And I thought Jamie Foxx has that sort of feeling to him that he could do that. Uh, but I went with someone else. Um, you know, Mike Coulter, Luke Cage, Luke Cage. Oh man, that would be, oh man, that's a great pick. Uh, if you see the character in the TV show, he's like this big buff guy Mm -hmm. who's very much an intimidating person. Right. Um, and I think Mike Coulter had, can just right away. You look at him, he has that, but he's Mm -hmm. also a great actor. Yeah. Um, if you've seen Luke Cage, you know he has that uh, ability to go between different uh, just tones. He starts out as kind of this idealist mm-hmm. um, and he gets more and more gritty, but he has this, he's like a, he's basically a police officer without being a police officer. Yeah. Um, and he can walk that line and kind of follow in his own way of his, the law. He follows the law. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Uh, so I think that part of the character he could really bring to it. Now he's also in this film called Skin, which mm-hmm. is about uh, him converting a skinhead. Okay. Um, and that movie is a, that's a great, really powerful um, independent film that not a lot of people got to see. Um, mm-hmm. It was not a very wide release, but he is he's a supporting character in a film. And he is just amazing. Um, and he has a, a hard side, but he also has a lot of a softer, caring side in that movie. Right. Um, okay. So I saw both sides of the, you know, him giving Miles a hard time and yelling at him. And then when Miles is, you know, at his home and he's crying in his room and his dad's mm-hmm. like, what's the matter? And comes and gives him like that hug and says everything's going to be okay. Yeah. I can see him playing both parts of that role and yeah. so that's what made him to me the perfect casting that's not bad that's not bad again i can't believe i didn't think of luke cage that's that's definitely a great one and now we we didn't choose everything there would be a ton of things to choose you know you'd have to pick like spider pig and um the spider-man other noir. spider-man noir uh gosh the spider one 2069 is that what it is what her name is the anime one yeah the anime one i believe so i might have gotten that wrong but i believe yeah. so. something along those lines yeah uh but anyways we need a villain 
Yes. So we have Prowler, who's more of the enforcer. Enforcer, but who's the big guy who everything's all about? Kingpin. Yes. So who did you choose as your kingpin? This one was tricky, just because honestly, every time like I was like going again, like checking off trades and being like, okay, who'd be good? Vincent D'Onofrio from the Daredevil show just kept popping into my mind. Like that was such a great casting on Marvel Television's part to give him that role. And I'm like, for me, I'm like, that's 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 Kingpin. Like in the same way that like Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. So I had to like, like I had to like um really try and like dissociate just the role. So like um I didn't keep associate. I didn't keep like attaching um D'Onofrio to it. Um, I decided to get a little um play around with like the uh race of the character i decided to like um like um race do a little um change the race of the character just i because i thought it would um i don't know like open up opportunities so i just wasn't looking for like another like big caucasian guy and i thought for kingpin in his role in the movie he had, like big intimidating like i remember like the one thing everyone always talked about was how huge they drew they drew kingpin and animated him in this film yeah and so i decided what if i go in a slightly like opposite direction and like maybe cast someone who was big in presence but not necessarily like some like huge like mr universe type character yeah um and so taking in all that and just accounting for who would just be a great intense person i brought back your boy oscar isaac interesting yeah because i thought like one like oscar isaac i feel can like play like you give him anything he will play that to the like maximum like extent yeah and so i'm like i'm not saying like oscar isaac couldn't get like buff and big for the role um like jet like he would be like smaller frame especially to how they portrayed kingpin in the movie and i thought if anyone could like compensate for like if then he's not the big block that kingpin was in the film but like make up for it in presence and Oscar Isaac is more than capable of doing that. And I think, um, like, I don't know, like I think on like most of Oscar Isaac's roles, like even in this, the morally gray stuff, like triple frontier, like he's still a relatively like good guy um, with the exception of like ex machina being his more like, not so much like a hero role. Yeah. Um, even in drive, he was like a relatively like moral dude sort of. Yeah. So I think for a chance for him to like break bad and just like be this very f- intense force of nature, I think would be very interesting. And I think he'd again he'd be just have this large presence around him. Um, and I don't know. I mean, like <laughs> I I remember trying to picture Oscar Isaac bald because you know, and that's right. one of Kingpin's traits. And I was like, you know, I think he could work it. <laughs> I think he could work it. I think he um. And he could definitely make it work and the look and um i don't know i just like the more i thought about it the more excited i got about it just because i think like oscar I, like going up against the rest of my cast oscar isaac like fighting like ryan gosling sophia lills um like talking to david diggs i thought that'd be such a cool thing especially since alongside my ryan gosling casting he's probably the biggest movie actor i have right in my cast so I don't know. I just thought Oscar Isaac would just be a fantastic choice. And I thought he'd be um, very powerful, just a powerful presence, especially since like they didn't spend a lot of time with Kingpin or at least they didn't like, you know, keeping track of all the characters they had. Kingpin wasn't one with like a total lot of screen time. I think Oscar Isaac would definitely make the most out of what he would, whatever he is given. Yeah. I think that's a good pick. Mm. The one thing that keeps on coming into my mind though is X-Men Apocalypse. Yeah, that's true. I did. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, that's not his fault, though. I'll be fair. Yeah, that, that, that a lot of that movie was just more <laughs> on That's the... just the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but I couldn't get that out of my head for some reason. Um, mm-hmm. And I saw him as the hero. There was no way I wasn't going to pick him as Spider-Man. Yeah, that's uh, fair. That's that, yeah. I flirted with other people, but at the end of the day, I kind of knew in the back of my head he was always the pick. So... Here's the thing. I'm still trying to figure this out right now. I don't know. I have three people mm-hmm. who I think would all be great kingpins. Okay. I think John Bernthal could be great. Okay. I think Bruce Willis could be great. And Bruce. I think David Harbour could be great. 
Oof. Um, all right, I'll tell you who I would put, like, la- like if we were to rank them. Yeah. Personally, I'd put Willis at the last, or at least the third place, just for me, just because I think, like, I don't know, I feel like it would be, like, it's, like, too, like, on the surface level, it's, like, too perfect. It's, like, oh, like, this bald guy who's, like, who's already known for, like, being, like, this intense, like, action presence. I've been, like, I've been, like, okay, eh, like, yeah i think it i mean what did you like what did you think of like willis as him like so i'll break it down for you mm-hmm. i ended up not picking willis even though okay. i'm still kind of picking between the other two mm-hmm. um i don't think he quite has the voice yeah that's not yeah um he doesn't have a voice that to me kind of puts the fear down like the fear in me that john bernthal has mm-hmm and I don't think he quite has the presence that David Harbour has. So I thought he didn't quite fit. Okay. But John Bernthal, if you've seen him as Punisher, he has a voice that will scare you to death. Oh, 100%. That's the voice of the Grim Reaper right there. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, hmm, do I do that? Do I put another person from the TV show, like the Marvel TV shows, into the movie? And that ended up working against John Bernthal. Okay. Um, unfortunately. So I went with David Harbour. Harbour would definitely be an interesting one. I'm I'm trying to like picture him just cuz I I still see him in his in his Stranger Things role. Mm-hmm. But I think that would be interesting just going off what I've seen in Stranger Things and he's had a few minor bits else in like elsewhere and like um like he was in the James Bond film Quantum of Solace. He was in right. um, David Ayer's End of Watch. I think that would be an interesting one. I just, I need to picture it. I haven't pictured it yet, but like, I think that'd be an interesting, that's an interesting one. Yeah. I want, I think with the thing with him is I couldn't pick someone who I thought perfectly fit this role. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't see anyone who really got that other than Vincent uh, D'Onofrio. Yeah. He perfectly fit the role. Um, and to be honest, I, I could have cast him. I, w- I was like, oh, I hate, I, none of these guys fit perfectly. I'll just cast him again. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I wanted to make make sure that this movie feels like it's its own thing, mm-hmm. uh, and so I think having David Harbor does that. He has the intimidation on screen. Uh, if you've seen Extraction, yeah, uh, he's he's very good in like a small. It's really one scene, two scene role. Yeah, he made the most of it. Yeah, and he he turns from your friend to being very very. You're like, oh no, this person is gonna kill me. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, but there's that belief that he's right, mm-hmm. and you can see, like, you can see that belief on David Harbor in that one scene. In one scene, he can turn from your friend to your enemy, but an enemy that you know still like believes in his core that what he's doing is right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to be able to do that in one scene really kind of pushed forward that idea that he could do it in a whole movie playing right. the main antagonist. I think I just, for me, I think I just would need to see him in a more serious role because even in his role in like Extraction, I saw him more like, I get, um, like, yes, he is a two-faced character, but I also felt like when he made his change, um, it was more like this like desperate or like more like a pathetic weasel type way. So interesting. Yeah, I feel like I just need to see him in like this serious like intense well like for oscar isaac i'm i don't know if you've seen a most violent year uh, i have not seen that yet okay but like he is he's fantastic he's with jessica chastain um mm-hmm. he is great in like like a dark like intense or like even though he's still technically the hero you see him go through like so much so i don't know david harbour yeah he's also in um interesting he's in black mass mm-hmm. uh the one the movie with johnny depp playing a uh, weddy bulger Mm-hmm. he's good in a smaller role smallish role in that and uh i know he's in black widow which is coming out right and he played hellboy um in the most recent hellboy and i didn't see the movie because i'm not a big fan of the franchise but i what i heard is the movie was bad but he, he was great um and hellboy is kind of that anti-hero kind of weird character mm-hmm I, I think he has the range. I think I see that potential in there, even if it hasn't been shown yet. Yeah, I can definitely that that like 
I can definitely agree with like the potential to to like just do something there to do something with this role. Yeah. Go this like type of character is there. So interesting. All definitely, right. Definitely an interesting set of people we got all around here. I think either way we have a pretty solid cast. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I don't think I'd be seeing this cast list either way and being like, oh gosh, I'm worried about this movie. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and please leave a comment down below whose video was, I mean, not whose video. Who's the cast? Whose cast was better. Um, I think mine was to be honest, but oh, that, really? that's, that's why I picked mine. <laughs> uh -huh, um, of course. <laughs> But let us know down in the comment section uh, how you feel. Did we miss someone? Is there someone that we completely yeah. forgot that should have been cast in a role? Um, let us know. Awesome. All right. We'll All see right. you next time. Peace out.